Hi everybody, welcome to another Goth Academy video. We're still getting ready for Game of Thrones Season 8. And in this video, we want to talk about what if in the big battle of the Trident during Robert's Rebellion, what if Rhaegar would have killed Robert? What would Westerosi history look like? It's fun to speculate on that, hmm? In this video, I'm collabing with Val from Because Geek and Chris from Smokescreen. So then I'm thinking like the main thing is that Rhaegar, he has this vision, right, of the whatever, Night King coming, maybe the Long Night, and he's preparing for that, and that's why he married Lyanna, and then that's why they had their son Aegon Targaryen, so then the whole realm will be ready, basically, on the wall for the White Walkers' arrival. It will change. You know, it seems like uh, a not, not as interesting a story, but more positive for the people living through it. Well, I mean, assuming that the battle didn't continue. I mean, if Rhaegar killed Robert in the middle of the battle or just didn't die, the battle still may go on. I don't know. I, I don't know. But yeah, if, if, I think if they had a chance to speak, you know, it'd be a whole different story too. But. Yeah, if he kills Robert, I don't know, does that end the rebellion right there just because the uh, potential king dies instantly? Yeah, it's like when Rhaegar died, so the Targaryens lost after that, and then Tywin joined the, joined the rebellion. So Tywin would join the Targaryen side. Yeah, so I think it goes on to he, he, he ends up kind of deposing with his father, the Mad King. He was planning on doing that anyway. And then, like you said, it's a whole different story. You got the Targaryens still in rule, this... Uh, Danny can come home, so she's not the you know potential new queen. You know, Jon Snow's a whole different story. Everything's it's it's a completely different, and like you said, I don't think quite as interesting. It's almost too straightforward. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Wait, so you think you think that Ned would die as well? Like he would be executed, or maybe die in battle because the war would go on, right? Because the war did go on after Rhaegar died, but it just like the tide was turned. The tide has turned. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, the, if the if he was at the Trident, because he said he told Rhaegar, I was look, I looked for you at the Trident. Then uh, if the war stops, then when he kills Robert, there's no need for being um, Jon Snow to be kept secret, I guess, because Targaryens are still in power. And then Rhaegar would obviously tell the world anyway. So then that whole story is gone. The whole piece about Ned, you know, keeping uh, Jon Snow a secret. Yeah, well, and I think Ned would also still be pretty pissed if he survives the whole war because his sister still died. And also his, his brother and his father. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah that still happens. So he, he may be, I don't know, but he, just like now, even even when Rhaegar died, he never resented Rhaegar. You know, he had great, actually good thoughts about him in the books anyway. So I don't know, he, he would still have that, that loss on his, uh, on, his, on his mind, but it wouldn't be like, I don't think he would blame him. And I think he's the honorable guy to... It, it, they started the rebellion, but they lost the rebellion. So then, just like the, some people, like Sir Barristan Selmy, for example, they still swear their allegiance back to to you know to Robert, like he did. And she basically changed sides. Um, so I think it's a similar situation. They would just keep their allegiance, and everything kind of moves forward. Well, I was thinking that yes, Rhaegar may talk to Ned and give him mercy, show him mercy, because Rhaegar did not like killing. You know, we know this. Um, so yeah, I think he would allow Ned to switch sides if Ned wanted to, although, you know, as we said, Ned would be pretty pissed about everything, you know, he's lost so many family members at this point. Rhaegar was trying to remove his own father from the throne, right? I thought this is something that he talked about with Tywin. But yeah, I think they would get together to dethrone, you know, the Mad King and, and Rhaegar would want, just was, would spass for the realm as well, like Varys. That was interesting, like, I, like I, as I was reading uh, Dance of the Dragons, it was so interesting, the flip side view of Rhaegar after we were told mostly one thing about him kidnapping Lyanna and all that. And then you felt like, oh no, he should have won. It would have been, it would have been so much better. I don't think Ned would have been necessarily pissed at Rhaegar in any way anyway, because he's not, he's not already in this circumstance, because he, he knew this seeker. He knew it was all, once he got to the Tower of Joy, what I'm saying, like they fought the whole rebellion that, you know, then he goes to the Tower of Joy and realizes, wait a minute, she loved him, you know. <laughs> so, so <laughs> she, this, he didn't kidnap but her. Still, she broke her vows. She should have uh, done what her father, Lord Father, told her to marry another guy. <laughs> Come on, this is the law, the honor. Yeah, no, but that's a good point. Like Ned would understand, I think. Yeah, I mean, he, he would definitely have the you know duty over love type thing, you know. But still, he would understand and get it and realize that this was all based on a lie. 
Rhaegar wasn't this bad person who kidnapped her. She left with him because of love. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a different dynamic. Or maybe she left him because of this prophecy. Maybe he also convinced her that she's, whatever, an integral part of solving this future problem, uh, blah, blah, blah. And also, uh, Ned and Rhaegar can maybe do like a, like a deal, like a truce, whatever, the war is over, I depose my father. So, the, like my father, he was the one who killed your, your father and your brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. But there, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, and I think, and I, and I think Ned and Rhaegar, I think Ned would have been open-minded enough to actually have a conversation with Rhaegar, where Robert... He was just in bloodlust mode. He he was just yeah, going to yeah, kill anybody yeah. Yeah, Targaryen yeah. Or, or anybody that supported Targaryens. Where Ned would have actually maybe parlayed, and 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 Rhaegar would have said, "Look, I know my father's crazy. I apologize on behalf of my house, kind of like Danny did in the show in season seven, where he's like, "Okay, look, he's crazy. I got. I know he's got to go. And believe me, I got plans for that. So let's talk about it." So I, I think that would have been uh, that would have been good after after a while after a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, this also means that the kids would still be alive as well, the ones that the mountain right. killed. Right. Yeah, the sack of King's Landing never never happens, and then Rhaegar rolls up in King's Landing with the help of Ned and maybe that host. The gates are open, and they can just take take him uh. out. Jamie doesn't do what he does necessarily. I don't know. Is there still a threat there? Who knows? Yeah, maybe still because he was a, he, he wants to burn everybody. You're right. Oh, he wants to burn everybody, so Jamie still has to kill him. Oh. Unless they, unless they depose him in some other way, and then I guess it, anyways, it's it's some precedent. The heir of the king deposing his father and taking over. That's like against the rules. So that would put some some checks and balances. That in case you're a mad king, your son and heir. That's something that happened quite frequently in history when the son, uh, whatever, usurped the father. But in the story, only in the show, right? With Ramsay and uh, some other northern house. Oh, right, yeah. They had to kill their fathers. But other than that... The Mad King Ares didn't really give the order to burn them all. That was only after Tywin came in and then started sacking the city. So if, if Tywin never has to go to the city because Rhaegar and the whole host goes... Then he doesn't give that order, so Jamie doesn't have to kill him in that in that same way. Also, one of the reasons why Jamie wanted to kill the Mad King was because the Mad King asked him to bring him Tywin's head as well. Yeah, so if that never happens, then he may maybe doesn't give that order to the Power Masters, and he sees Rhaegar and the Targaryen host coming back, you know, um, and and doesn't go batshit crazy because it's not Tywin sacking the city, opening the gates to him. Yeah, and then they can put him whatever in his room under guard, stay there. Something to that effect. You know, go back to Dragonstone, chill, put him in a padded room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smoke something, relax, relax. <laughs> I think John would still end up with Danny potentially, I mean, because that was a Targaryen thing. I mean, that would, they would have been cool with that. Uh, but... Why? Now I want to see this parallel universe and them ending up together again in every lifetime. <laughs> yeah, every lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I don't know because he would have found out a lot. Probably found out a lot sooner who he was, and since there's no more reason for secrecy, maybe it's like a regular Targaryen, uh, you know, intermarriage, marrying uh, whatever an aunt and a cousin. That's uh, that's. Uh... It, yeah, it's happened. It, it, ha it has happened before, but it's in more modern times, I think if they had met knowing their aunt and nephew, I don't think it would have been the same for them. Because I think they're trying to avoid the Mad King situation, right? So they're probably trying to not intermarry. Uh, maybe they'll be against the law. Yeah, because the whole marriage thing before was about it was it was it wasn't just about keeping their looks as Targaryens. It was about dragon bonding, so and hatching and all that. So with the world of no dragons. You know, oh, yeah. I don't know if they, I, I don't know if they'd have looked at it the same way. Well, and they would need some alliances as well because if Rhaegar were to dethrone his father, he needs people to support him and make those political marriages between houses. And yeah, but who wouldn't want Rhaegar uh, instead of the Mad King? Well, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, I'm gonna replace the crazy guy. Oh, yeah, wait, go for wait. It. Would you think that maybe a little finger might still try to hatch some plans there? Because I mean, he's still there. He would still be there. But that would be much more difficult. It would be much more difficult if the because what he used is the instability that was created after when you have like a new house, a new royal house, and then the king's heirs are not he, his heirs, then you have a lot of room for maneuver. But if you have the same house that's just won another civil war, like a dance of dragons or any other civil war, 
then people will say, oh, no, you can't beat those guys. It will take 100 more years for someone to... I was thinking to, you might uh, still have that conflict of Tywin wanting to marry Cersei to Rhaegar and Rhaegar maybe not accepting that. But then if Rhaegar would save the realm from the White Walkers, you know, that's a good thing to run on uh, in an election. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah. if people will vote for, for, for the other guy. That's like a lifetime appointment, uh, even in a, in, in a democracy. If you, yeah, the whole Tywin the thing, you know, he, he did, you know how Tywin is in the Lannisters. They didn't decide to go sack King's Landing until they knew it was, you know, they were going to be on the winning side. So if you got Rhaegar winning, and everybody kind of getting behind him with the understanding we're going to th overthrow this mad king, then uh, he's probably on board with, with Rhaegar. Then maybe he would want to uh, marry Cersei to Rhaegar now that Robert is now dead. Yeah, but Robert, but, but Rhaegar will be married to Lyanna. Or maybe she dies anyway. Right, right. Maybe she dies anyway, right. Or it's still, um, you know, until he makes it known or whatever, so. Yeah, he didn't have like a midwife there, right, to, to treat her. Maybe if she were in someplace safe, I don't know, because I feel like, nah, a lot of women still died, even if they had help. They just didn't know how, how to stop the bleeding. So a lot of people died in childbirth. Uh, so I think Lyanna would have still died. But I'm thinking, I just don't want things to work out. I feel like everything would just go to crap, like, <laughs> still in some other way. Something would just not work out after. Well, the other side of that is if, let's say, all this happened and Rhaegar rallies the realm and people were behind him and they understand it was all bullshit, you know, they were in love, he didn't kidnap anybody, and it's all basically put on the Mad King because he is insane. But then when he starts talking about, look, let me tell you, these crazy, these crazy ice demons from the north are coming, <laughs> then how many people in the south are going to believe that they're going to say, wait yeah. a minute, he's just yeah. as fucking crazy as his dad. Yeah. Yeah. So we, <laughs> yeah. we may have another conflict. Yeah, ooh, that's a good point. Only the Night's Watch would it would like recognize, like, wait a minute, he's not lying. So they'd have to come vouch for him. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> right. And the maesters, maybe, I don't know, the maesters maybe would also say that he's crazy. Yeah, and then, this, and then the faith, I don't think it works well for the faith that there are uh, these monsters. It doesn't uh, fit in their dogma. That's right, exactly, have, exactly. Uh, yeah, a non-magical world. Yeah, 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 oh, that's a very good point. So then, you know, you think things will turn to shit anyway. They, they could, I'm just saying there's that, that potential because like, you know, like I said, the, the northern houses, they would be more apt to believe these kind of stories because they, they've heard them growing up and, you know, there's some truth in them. Um, they've probably forgotten, you know, the North don't remember anything. <laughs> so, but the Night's Watch has started to see this stuff happen. But again, then again, then you got to ask, okay, what are they reacting to anyway? And if something changed in the South as far as, you know, was it, was it Jon Snow? Was it, uh, you know, a Targaryen killing a Starks? Whatever you think they're reacting to. If that didn't happen the same way, would they come back anyway? Well, you still need Bran to turn into the Three-Eyed Raven, right? Because that was always going to happen, because it's a loop that's already started, right? So Yeah, I mean, assuming that threat's real, is still there, yeah, I think that's got to happen. Yeah, yeah, if they wake up, then he has to, to become the Three-Eyed Raven. Yeah, but how would he still be pushed out of the tower? Would Jaime and Cersei still come to Winterfell? At some point. Yeah, that that is true. The, they may not have never showed up, and then yeah. uh, la Lady never dies, you know, life for a death or death for a life, whichever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you don't know, but I'm um, assuming the threat still happens. In some way, he would have probably still been recruited, I guess, maybe. The thing is that the Three-Eyed Raven right, had to have Winterfell burned, burned down in order for Bran to leave north of the Wall. So something dramatic would have to happen for Bran to leave his home, but if but if there's peace, yeah, then, something uh, would be messed up. That's unlikely. Yeah, unless and, unless Balon Greyjoy decided to just go take it over anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he that, that's possible. <laughs> so. No, I like I like the idea of people thinking that Rhaegar is crazy and then things going wrong through there, because then people will start thinking, oh, we need to replace him because he's crazy, and then you start getting those, like, conspiracies. Yeah, Targaryens are insane. Yeah, this is kind of the same thread. Targaryens are insane. Like the old joke in the books, you know, when uh, the gods flip a coin when a Targaryen's born, you know, his, they're going to be uh, normal and nice or crazy. Personally, I think Littlefinger would still be smart enough to create some sort of chaos for him to climb, you know, <laughs> something. He'll figure it out. Yeah, at some point. He, he, he would definitely, like Gil said, he would definitely need the chaos to, to turn people against, you know, Lannisters versus Starks. But 
I don't know. Even with those characters, it wouldn't take much to create some other thing going on, but it would be a completely different story. But it's 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 John Arryn that brought him there, yes. right? Yes. So yeah, he probably still dies. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, Littlefinger could still kill John Arryn. Blame it on the Lan the Lannisters. <laughs> I don't know. Some. <laughs> Yeah, just say like, yeah, the Lannisters just want to put someone else that they trust as their hand, so you know, like, so he can manipulate Rhaegar into doing things, and instead of the whole, you know, the Lannisters have illegitimate children or something like that. But yeah, there's always a way. It would, it would definitely be interesting to see. It would be because there's you still got some drama that could happen and essentially end up in the same place if you think about it. So that's it for this video. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you patrons for supporting the channel and we'll see you all next time. Bye everybody.